process starts with uh, grain, um, and and everyone will use the term malt. So all malt is it's malted grain. It can be barley, it can be rye, and it can be wheat. The seed is transformed; it's allowed to grow a little bit, and that basically enables enzymes and um, the chemical reactions to take place in the grain later on. Once the guys have have malted it, they will roast it or kiln it, and and that's where the colour starts to come in. And then afterwards we'll blend all this stuff together depending on what kind of beer we want, how dark we want it, how malted we want it, and then we'll mill it. And all that does is just cracks it open um, and it just enables the, the carbohydrates to be utilized and changed into sugars later on in the process. Once we finish with uh, the malted grain and mold it, we'll bring it over to these tanks here. This is the brew house. The grain is basically converted into a sugary substance that we can use for fermentation and to make the beer. We will add it into that tank over there, which has got hot water at about 68 degrees. And that's where the chemical reactions will take place, releasing the sugars. Then we need to get rid of the grain part, so we can just have a sugary substance or a sugary liquid. That will happen in that vessel over there, which is called the lauter. After that, it will all come back to this vessel here, and that's where we boil it up and add the hops. Uh, the hops is responsible for either the bitterness or the aroma. And we boil for an hour and a half to get the hop flavor or the hop bitterness out. And then we'll transfer it to a whirlpool, which just gets all the hop sediment out of the, of the port, the unfermented beer. And then we'll cool it down to about 20 degrees on the way to the fermentation table. So here basically the stuff is actually coming in today. Uh, we've got some water going straight to a fermenting tank. Uh, the beer will stay there, or the wort will stay there for about anything between five and seven days, except for the case of our IPA, which will add another five days for dry hopping. Uh, it'll come to one of these tanks, it'll stay there, it'll ferment, the sugars will get converted into alcohol and CO2, the CO2 will bubble off, uh, and then you've essentially got beer after five days. So you have to filter it, remove all the sediment, and then we'll go to one of these smaller tanks here, these pressurized tanks, you'll see them over there as well. That's where we can pressurize the beer and add the CO2. After that, we'll bottle it, keg it, and send it out into the market.